And joining me now to discuss this at greater length is Jonathan Klinger, an advocate and legal counsel for the Israeli digital rights movement, joins us from Central Israel. And from Malta, Jaguar Advagal, an advocate and the CEO at Jaguar Lawyers and a former CFO to a variety of high-tech companies. Thank you both very much for joining us and feel free to interact as we get into somewhat of a debate. But Jonathan, I'd like to start with you. Can you just send an email to staff who already work for you and unilaterally change their working contract? Where, where are the proper protocols here? Well, it really depends on which jurisdiction you reside in. The United States doesn't have those labor protection laws that provide the same protection as in Israel. Under Israeli law, of course, this would be illegal and the employees would be able to later on claim wrongful termination and unjust termination. But the thing is that if we look at what Musk did, we, we understand his rationale behind this. He has a big loan to repay. It carries almost a billion dollars of interest per month, if I'm not mistaken. That loan, just to repay it, he needs to drive revenues up. He needs to make employees leave and make Twitter as lean as profit and as profitable as possible. So in order to do that, he stretches the law and if you saw what he did, the first thing he did was to replace Twitter's legal team and management. Now he's going down the line. He's asking for people to uh, provide their services to be employed as if it were a small startup working from a garage where people just provide their services, you know, 18 hours a day because they have the same goal. If employees would have been compensated uh, let's say in an equal manner that those employees would receive ample stock options um, as a consideration for the new services. I would look at it another way than if it's just a command going from the top to the bottom asking employees either agree or pack your stuff and leave. Right, and Jaguar, surely he could risk a mass walkout here. It doesn't matter necessarily that he's the world's richest man, but he's already announced half of Twitter staff are being let go. Now this, where does this leave us? Well, in continuation to Jonathan's words, uh, with which uh, I fully agree, we, at least in Israel, we don't see the, anything different with the startup employees. And I'd like to only resent the fact that uh, people are saying, uh, why would you fire half of or require so much of employees to whom you might owe so much? But bear in mind, uh, he's a new buyer. He's like the new broom in the room. He doesn't owe any of these employees anything yet. He just paid for what he owes and he paid full price or whatever price for the company. He's not the one who made this company with those employees, new or, or, or older or veterans. So he owes them nothing. And with capitalistic uh, uh, labor laws in the States, uh, as Jonathan mentioned, of course he can do that legally. And I believe that it falls very through with uh, his regular opinion saying that he'd rather work with a smaller team of highly motivated and highly skilled people than with uh, pretty good people and then, you know, moderately moti motivated ones. And I think that a lot of employees would be very mad and you know what, they might, they might leave their jobs and that would be fine with him or any new buyer. And I believe that the burden of the debt, it's like a leverage buyout uh, of a company is totally irrelevant because even if the company had no debt whatsoever to a new buyer to whoever and this company is losing about four million dollars a day but even so that if you want to make a turnaround if you want to change the company from a content advertisement kind of a company to an engineering kind of a company a software company maybe a fintech a financial related services company then you need techies you need people who think of it a company as if it's their startups and whatever they are uh, compensated enough or not it's for them to decide it depends on market conditions that with these days market conditions on high tech they might find it really useful for them and that might actually get back the excitement uh to that company as if it was a startup again so i mean right. I, I admire these, these steps 
market conditions definitely plays a huge role here. And, and I want to bring this to the fore. In his recent email that he said to the company, and listen to this quote, only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. Now, I read this and thought, hello, are you the owner of a massive tech company or a teacher? But as you mentioned, Jaguar, motivation is a key point here. But I can't be the only one wondering if this is simply a case of horrible bosses or effective management styles. So which one is it? Could it be both? Um, we call it the spirit of the commander, kind of. Um, I think with that attitude, whoever gets mad at that kind of an attitude would and should leave or get a notice if they don't sign by 5 p.m. Uh, we'll get a notice and we'll get a severance of three months, which is relatively generous in the States. So. Um, I think that sets the spirit and very well so and that's very honest in a way because if that's his the new boss's spirit then why working around it politically correct talking about it and not just saying it up front up twitter um to all your employees that's very very honest jonathan do you tend to agree uh, i certainly do not agree here i think that as we saw in past studies and past researches, uh, the fact that someone requires all employees to excel and excel is measured in the wrong way by measuring hours and not production means that you are not allowing certain diverse population to be engaged. You do not allow working moms to be a part of your workforce. You do not allow uh, students uh, who may be more creative but can give less time or you do not allow uh, people who are uh, elder and need some more time off you need this diversity in order to have a successful company and you cannot only measure by hours if you've listened to the recent episode of free economics radio they measured a chinese company that started a hybrid model and they saw that even though the general observation of managers on hybrid employees remained equal to, to their uh, scores before they became hybrid, the number of lines of code went up even though their hours went a bit down. This means that happy employees are more productive and you can see that in uh, most uh, studies on four hour work weeks on paid time off there's a lot of companies in israel that would give you indefinite vacation days you can choose how many vacation days to take as long as you're productive in the company you'll stay in the company measuring by the hour is the wrong way to measure employees because some people are more productive than others and some have only 10 productive minutes a day, but in those 10 minutes, they can be super productive. If you're not in tech support, if you're not in a help desk, in a job that needs to respond to others, then measuring only the time you're in the office and Musk requires people to be in their office and not work remotely is not the right way to do. Having said that, also motivating them by putting pressure and by threatening to terminate whomever is least um, uh, is least uh, attending, that would be another key point to make your employees less productive. Employees would be fearful. They would start looking for other uh, uh, jobs when they're in the office. They'll open up ZipRecruiter. They'll open up LinkedIn. They'll stay these hours, but they'll do other things. If anyone read uh, Scott Adams' book, The Joy of Work, it's a late 90s book on corporate America. He has a, we, a we need to We need to specifically work. have a look, and I'm sorry to interrupt here, but I've listened to what both of you are saying. And the truth is, Twitter is not the only one. We're looking at Meta, Facebook's parent company, Amazon. They've also laid off or are going to lay off thousands of employees. So is this a trend or is it a sign of the times? Jaguar, you mentioned that this could just be the market circumstances. Yes, the market circumstances, and while I fully agree with Jonathan regarding it, it's about production and not about the hours, I still believe this is like the spirit of uh, the, the new spirit of the company, and this is just a symbol. And um, 
I think Elon Musk has expressed uh, previously against the hybrid uh, work uh, capabilities because of the lesser production uh, productivity of that, not because of it's being hybrid. Uh, he was saying that employees don't actually work that much uh, from home as much as they would from the factory. He still right. calls these places factories, not just the office. So yes, market conditions are very relevant. Employees would be more afraid to leave their jobs. If they might be more frustrated and more afraid or whatever, but um, the chances of them leaving is not as much as it was last year. So that is another condition, market condition to take into account that, that I believe he's taking into account within the considerations. Plus, if we think he needs a much leaner company, then losing 50% of the workforce and maybe the lesser 50%, the less productive one or the less motivated one or the less willing to the new corporate culture, uh, it's actually a blessing. Uh, in Israel, I think I think to there's a point to be made here that in his defense, there's been this massive drop, as both of you mentioned in revenue, reporting that the company is losing four million dollars a day. So it really is very interesting to see whether the ship can be turned around or whether he's going to stray it into a tidal wave. Thank you both very much for joining us today.